Hello dear students, uh, today we will start a topic from the life process that is transportation in plants. <clears throat> Already we have completed the transportation in human beings in the last session. So now we will read how transportation takes place in case of a plant. As you know that plant has no pumping organ or any such circulatory system like human. But how these substances are transported in case of a plant. Normally then question comes what type of things should be transported in case of a plant. So as you know that uh, plants do photosynthesis and for photosynthesis water is needed. The water is absorbed by the root from the soil and that water should reach to the leaf. So from root to leaves the water should reach and for that some transportation mechanisms should be there in case of a plant. Similarly, after photosynthesis, the glucose or sucrose, the food is prepared inside the leaves and after preparation of food, that food should be distributed to each and every part of the plant. Then how this food is transported to each and every part of the plant like root, stem. So, this two things must be transported inside the plant. So, transportation, what are the things transported inside the plant? So, I can categorize into two that one, transportation of water, transportation of water and minerals. You know that uh, when water is absorbed, the minerals are also absorbed in the dissolved form through water and the second transportation should be that transportation of food prepared in the leaves. So we will discuss the transportation of water and transportation of food and for transportation of food and water <coughs> actually in case of a plant there is a special tissue for conduction for transportation and they these tissue are called vascular tissue which are of two types one is xylem and another is fluid so you know that uh, transportation of water and minerals it takes place through xylem xylem tissue helps in transportation of water and minerals whereas transportation of food takes place through the tissue fluid. So as you have already read in standard 9 that xylem and phloem are complex tissue as they are made up of four type of cells. It is a complex tissue because it is made up of four type of cells which are tracheids, vessels, xylem, parenchyma and xylem fibers. These are the four type of cells present in xylem tissue whereas in case of a phloem tissue the cells are sieve tubes companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. You know these <coughs> out of four type of cells. So we will discuss one by one. As I have told, the xylem is made up of four type of cells. Why I am writing these four type of cells? Because these cells are has an important role for transportation. So normally the tracheids and vessels, in case of a xylem and seed tube, they are mostly responsible for transportation. Why? Because the tracheids and vessels are normally they are tube-like structures. Okay. 
and C tubes, the name suggests that it is also a tube-like structure. As these cells are tube-like structures, so what happens? These tracheids, one tracheid and another tracheid, they normally join one end to end. Means, for example, this is one tracheid, let and next tracheid starts like this. Okay, so one tracheid second, third or vessels, first vessel, second vessel like that, they normally joined end to end and form a continuous channel, a continuous tube. Similarly, sieve tubes are also, they are present in a plant, first sieve tube, then next, then next. So, they normally arranged end to end and form a long continuous channel like structure so and through which the transportation takes place and another difference between this transportation of water and food is there as i told it is takes place through the xylem it is takes place through the uh, takes place through the fluent and second difference is that transportation of water and minerals it is a passive process Passive process means that the water normally reaches to the leaf with a passive process as no energy in the form of ATP are used in this process. We will read how it takes place. But as I have told that it is a passive process because transportation of water takes place without utilization of energy in the form of ATP molecules. ATPs are not used in case of a transportation of water through xylem. Whereas in case of transportation of food through phloem is a active process as it needs energy and ATP must be utilized for this process. For this transportation of food, ATPs are used, adenosine triphosphate where energy is stored. So, energy consuming process is there. That's why it is called active process. The third difference between them is that it is takes place in upward direction only. It means water always moves from roots to leaves. Always movement of water takes place in the upward direction. But the food transportation when the food is transported, it takes place in both upward and downward, means bidirectional. What does it mean? That the food is prepared in the leaves, from leaf it can reach to the root also and sometimes in case of some plants, you know, the root also stores the food for its future. And when it is needed, from the root, the food can also transport it to upward, in upward direction to the cells of the leaves. So, food can transport in the downward direction as well as upward direction. So, bidirectional movement can take place for transportation of food. But in case of water and minerals, only water is moved in upward direction. There is a main difference between this transportation of water and transportation of food. But now <coughs> we will consider one by one. First we will read how this process takes place. What is the mechanism behind it? Okay. So <coughs> the transportation of water and minerals actually takes place in two main theories are there. Students, uh, have you wondered that uh, <coughs> in such big tree like uh, we can say banyan tree, like coconut tree, how this water actually reaches to the leaf, the several meter height. There is no such a pump or any heart, or I have told no pumping organ is present. Then how the water is reached to the leaf with so much height against the gravitational force? So we'll read how it takes place. So the transportation of water and minerals, actually uh, two theories, it takes place 
it takes place through two main processes or two main mechanism I can say which is given in your syllabus one is a root pressure okay and the second one is transpiration pull transpiration pull these are the main two processes takes place in case of a plant which help to move water from root to leaves <coughs> first of all we will discuss what is root pressure so as uh, you can see in this word root pressure actually root is creating a pressure to move the water in the upward direction how does it takes place we will see first of all what happens listen carefully that the root you know you see that uh, this is a root and this is present inside the soil so what happens uh, the cell which is near to the soil the cell of the root which is contact with the soil for example this is I will make it a bigger one for example ok let this is a root and the cell which is nearest to the contact with the soil this is a cell of the root and this cell is contact with the soil what the cell does by using ATP it is an energy consuming process by using ATP it collects <coughs> ions from the soil into the cell means this root cell collects ions from the soil into the cell not only this cell the cell which is nearest to the or contact with the soil the cell which is contact with the soil all these cells what they do they collect ions from the soil into the cell by using energy from ATP so when ions are uh, collected or concentration of ions becomes more inside the cell then what happens the water easily enter inside the cell so first they collect the ions by using ATP when the concentration of ion becomes more inside the cell then water concentration will become less <coughs> the water concentration inside the outside the soil is more so what will happen now the water starts to move into the cell again I am repeating first of all what happens the cell collects iron from the soil by using ATP when the concentration of soil concentration of iron inside the cell increases <coughs> then water concentration decreases so water from the soil enter into the cell so now what will happen the cell have now more osmotic pressure means water and ions will be more inside the cell the cell becomes uh, turgid condition or sweller then what will happen the cell which is nearest to it so another soil is there so now the water will enter to the next cell because it has more water concentration and it has less water concentration so you know the water can move from higher concentration to lower concentration so another cell is there so what will happen from this cell it will move to second cell from second cell it will move to third cell like that it will move up so it is not taking place for a single cell so all the cell which is nearest to the or contact with the soil they will collect ions 
the water will enter into it to uh, balance this pressure osmotic pressure so now the water from the contact cell it will move to the next cell so if this thing happens for many cells so what will happen the water from the soil will go up into the stem slowly but it is a very slowly but steady means it will continuously the water will enter and from the root cells to next cell next cell so it will move towards the stem and you will find the water will move slowly slowly towards the stem so this pressure is known as root pressure because the root cells have a, a, a definite role for creating this pressure to move the water up towards the stem hence it is known as root pressure but this in this root pressure the water will definitely move up but not with a high pressure very slowly it will move up so that is why what happen this mechanism will help to those plants which have very less height like herbs grass for short height plant like herbs and grass this root pressure is sufficient for moving water from root to leaves but what will be for the trees which is several meter high because this pressure is not sufficient enough to move the water to several meters height so that is why the root pressure is helpful for those plants which are very short in height this is the root pressure theory or root pressure mechanism by which water can reach to the tip of the or leaf of the plant another uh, uh, point about root pressure is it is uh, normally uh, helpful during night okay uh, during night there is no transpiration actually we'll read now so as no at night no transpiration takes place the root pressure helps the water to move towards the leaf sometimes have you seen that if you cut the stem you know this is a plant and if you cut the stem here you will find the some uh, little liquid like structures are oozes out oozes out i am telling means there is small amount of water or uh, liquid like structures is coming out from that cut stem so that is the water which is move moved up by the root pressure which is helpful for short height plant then we'll read about transpiration pool so the name also suggesting transpiration pool what is the meaning of transpiration transpiration is a process by which the water of the plant the extra water of the plant goes through the stomata in the form of water vapor again i am telling transpiration is a process by which water in the form of water vapor goes through stomata of the leaves this process is called transpiration then this transpiration actually create a pool a pressure suction which help the water to move so what happens i will draw another diagram here to see that this is a leaf okay this is say the stem and this is the root so what happens you know that uh, xylem is present in the leaf xylem is present in the stem xylem is present in the root so what happens the xylem consists of tracheids and vessels as i have told before the tracheids and vessels of the xylem are tube like structures they are interconnected with each other it means 
the trachytes vessels of the leaf are interconnected with each other to form a continuous chain or a continuous path so you think that the trachyte vessels are forming a continuous channel from leaf to root okay so what happens when transpiration takes place during day time the water from the leaves goes up the water vapor goes up from the leaves during day time then what will happen when the water from this part of the leaf goes up in the form of vapor so this due to transpiration this will create a suction or a pull which will pull the water from if this water is finished then it will take the next water next water will move like this from this cell the water will move like this then water will move like this so what will happen when this water will finish the from the soil the water will move to the root actually it acts like a pipe you know if if you will take a long pipe okay it is a long pipe is there so one end of the pipe is dipped inside the water and the other end of the pipe if you suck it will suck from through your mouth you what will happen the water will enter through the pipe and reaches to the tip of the tube so exactly same thing takes place in here it acts like a continuous tube so when the water is goes out water goes out in the form of vapor from the tip of the tube the same amount of water is entering from the soil to the root because this transpiration is creating a pull from this to this so finally this suction will reach to the root and finally the water will enter into the root so this pull is created by the transpiration hence this is called transpiration pull so as long as the water